kind of love this. It's really great. What's up my friends? If you do not know me, my name is Miranda. I'm not an ultralight backpacker by any means, but I don't generally carry a pillow when I go backpacking. What I really like to do is sleep on my down jacket. I'll like roll it up into a ball. I'll wrap my fleece around it and I'll sleep on that. But anyway, I'll drool and then I'll have a big drool spot on my clothes and then I'll wear them during the day and then I'll sleep on them and I'll drool on them some more. So I wanted to try and make something that would be specifically to be used as a pillow, but also have dual purpose when I'm backpacking. And so I decided to make a pillow stuff sack. So I'll walk through how to make the pillow stuff sack in this video, but then I'll link the pattern as well as the instructions in the description below, and then some tips for how to modify the size. So in order to do this, you will need a half yard of ripstop nylon or sport nylon, a half yard of flannel or a micro fleece, some matching thread, a non-marking or washable pen or Taylor's chalk, a toggle, like this little dude, and some paracord or utility cord. And then you'll also want to have a measuring tape or a ruler, some sharp scissors for cutting your fabric, and pins. Obviously, you should also have some way to sew this. So I'll be using my sewing machine, but you can also do this by hand. It's just going to take a little bit longer to do that. Let's get started. Welcome to my sewing desk. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So I've decided that I want my backpacking pillow to be 12 inches long by eight inches wide by about four inches tall. So I did some math. I have cut my fabric to be 14 inches wide by 18 inches long. For this, I have two pieces of my sport nylon cut to that 14 by 18 inches. And then I just need one of the flannel. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this out, then cut it out, and then we'll start stitching. We're gonna go ahead and pin this stuff sack together with the right sides out. So you'll have nylon, flannel, nylon, like that. So you can see here I have nylon, flannel, and nylon. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pin around three edges of this, leaving one of the short edges open up here, because that'll be the top part of the stuff sack. My last pin. Now I know this looks really enormous right now. This is actually gonna get a lot smaller, so don't worry, you're not making like a massive stuff sack. Before I start stitching this, I am going to mark from one top corner where we have no pins, which is unpinned. I'm going to mark down an inch and a half and that is where I will start or finish my stitching. So instead of going all the way to both corners at the top, I will mark down an inch and a half and just start there. The reason we do that is that we need an opening for the paracord and the drawstring to go through. And so we're just basically leaving that here now and then we'll finish it once we get there. Cool, alrighty. You can see right here, I have marked an inch and a half and I will start sewing there and work my way all the way around and then finish all the way at the top corner on the other side. Again, this is the top of the stuff sack, this is the opening, and then we've got three sides pinned. Let's sew! So I am going to just sew a normal straight stitch, and then we're gonna sew at a half inch seam allowance, which is like right past here. All right, so now we've stitched all the way around, leaving a inch and a half gap on this top corner and leaving one side fully open, we're going to trim our seams. Uh, these seams right now should be at a half inch seam allowance, and we're gonna trim it down to about a quarter inch. It'll be easier to do this next section, which is the French seams. Should be fun. So go ahead and trim your seam allowance. So I've just gotten up to this top corner where I have left, I've started sewing an inch and a half down from the very top. I am going to cut the seam allowance on this section, but I'm not going to do it all the way from that very top. Let me show you what I mean. So like that. So I've left the full seam allowance and fabric at the top where it's unstitched. And then I've just started trimming away the seam allowance on this edge. The reason we do that is that this is eventually gonna get turned in and then folded over to create that channel for our toggle and our paracord. Now we're gonna turn it right side out. You'll want to turn it so that you'll have flannel and nylon on one side and just nylon on the other side. And this is now the inside of your stuff sack. So now I have my pillow stuff sack pillow side out and I have pressed it on low heat and I'm gonna go ahead and stitch around these seams again. 
I know this seems like double the work, but again, the reason we're doing this is just to capture that raw edge on the inside of the seam so that you have no truly raw edges when it's all done. Now, in theory, when I turn it right side out, you should not see any of the seams from the first time. So moment of truth. When you do this part, make sure you're turning it in between the two pieces of nylon. There you have it. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pin it with the side seam and the bottom seam together, like corner. I'll show you. So we'll take a pin, we've got this corner pressed flat, and I'm gonna take this pin and I'm gonna go through the seam inside and then through the seam in the bottom. So just like that, so you can see that the pin is going through the seam in the top and then into the seam in the bottom. And we're gonna pin straight along this seam line, just like that. Cool. Mitering this corner is what's going to give the stuff sack height. So like I said, I'm trying to make mine about four inches tall to accommodate my down jacket and whatever else I put in there. And I mark two inches straight down and then I'm gonna draw a straight line across here and that'll be my stitching line. So two inches down from the top corner. I wanna do the same thing on the other side and then we're gonna stitch along those lines. So I have my two corners pinned. This is the bottom of my stuff sack. I've marked my lines straight across. All right, so we're gonna stitch along those metered corners. One down. We're actually almost done. So now you can see we've got these corners stitched. We are gonna turn it inside out. I just wanna show you what this is gonna look like so that if you haven't understood, now you will. This is what the pillow is gonna be like. You can see we've got the bottom here. Those are our corners. And then again, still we have this gap at the top. So let's turn it back, right side out. And now we are going to trim off these corner pieces about an eighth or a quarter of an inch from the stitch line. Make sure that you're trimming it towards the peak, not this direction. That should be obvious. Neat. So we just cut our little corners off. All right, cool. So here are our corners. This is the inside of our pillow stuff sack and we are going to stitch three eighths or a half of an inch from that corner. Again, we're just doing that same thing we did with the sides and the bottom, the French seams. So that is one inside corner done. I'm gonna do one more. That's the hard part of the stuff sack done. We are going to now finish the top channel, which is where the toggle and the paracord will go. So what we're gonna do is roll this down about a quarter of an inch, press it, and then fold it down the full inch. And that'll make our channel for our toggle. So now I have pinned and rolled that whole section there. You can see that I'm still going to have an opening for the cord to go through. So I wanna make sure not to stitch over that. And then we're on the last step, which is just to stitch really close to this roll here all the way around. Here we go. Cool, so this is the inside. This is the pillow side. And then this is the outside. So I'm going to leave my sewing desk and meet you back at the table where we'll put in the cord and the toggle and test this bad boy out. Okay, cool. So we have our stuff sack made and the last thing to do is to thread the cord through and add the toggle. So the top opening of my stuff sack is about 24 inches around. So I've cut my cord to 30 inches to give me a little bit of extra to play with. And we're gonna thread this through that channel we created. All right. Cool, so there we have it. Now, I wanna add my toggle to the end of this. So I'm going to trim the very ends of this paracord or utility cord, and then we're gonna thread both of these through our bright orange toggle. Awesome, so yeah. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie an overhand knot with the cord. Yeah, just like that. And now the next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna trim off the excess from just above this knot. 
And then I'm actually going to burn it and kind of press it down onto the knot so it doesn't come out. And I'm just gonna take my scissors and kind of press that down. There you go, so that should hold that knot in place. And there is our pillow stuff sack. So here is the pillow stuff sack made, but the real question is, does it work? So I'm gonna turn it pillow side out, grab my down jacket, and we're gonna stuff this guy in here. <laughs> this is actually awesome. All right, there you go. This is my new backpacking pillow. Awesome. All right, so it works, it's very functional, but is it practical? Let's see how much extra weight I will be carrying for the luxury of a pillow. So this thing weighs 1.8 ounces. So that's pretty good, actually. I feel like I would probably carry that to go backpacking. If making this is not your cup of tea, you can obviously buy some awesome pillows on REI.com, um, or you can just not carry a pillow, which is what I did for a really long time. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Bye, y'all.